Yes. <laughs> okay. Live. Let me change the title. Rifle rollers and rolling harriers. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Let me test sound. Sound check, one, two. Hello, there we go, we're good. All right, sound is good. Let me check how this looks and how this sounds. Should be able to hear the airplane now. Oh. All right, we got sound and airplane. Cool. Should be good to go. Scroll down here. Okay. And I will start up the live if anyone wants to join. Host. Host. Everything looks good on screen. Cool. Okay, I'm going to do some warm up stuff. There we go. Still using this, unfortunately. Did anyone watch the uh, Tucson Aerobatic Shootout or watch any of the videos? I know the, they live streamed it, which is pretty cool. They actually did a really good job. Um, I I think I've watched most of the top guys. There's still a couple flights I've missed. And I'm gonna go watch, but it was there's some awesome flying this year. That's for sure. Need to adjust this. There we go. It's a little better. Yeah, but tonight I'm just going to go over mostly rifle rollers, rolling harriers, 
all that fun shenanigans. Uh, so should be pretty, pretty informative. If there's anything I know how to do, it's rolling harriers. So um, let me check what time it is. So it's 8:03. I'll be flying around to about 8:10, 8:12. Then I'm going to go right into the tutorial, then I'm going to go look at some YouTube comments and stuff like that, just kind of the normal gig. So that is the plan so far. So I'm just going to fly around. Do you have any questions or stuff you want me to go over before? Just hit me up in the live chat. I'm always watching that. So yeah, I'm just going to do some warm up, try and not fly like garbage today. Yes, I can comment on dual rates, expos, so, you know, it's kind of personal preference, you know, you got to find what really works for you. For me, when I set up dual rates, um, I, I always have one rate that's just my 3D rate, that's pretty much everything at full blast. Um, a good place to start is ailerons. I've heard the magic number is around 37 to 39 degrees. Um, I can't tell you why, I just... I've heard that's what works. Um, a big thing with ailerons though is sealing your aileron uh, hinge line. That will help get more roll rate and help just get better aileron movement and all that stuff. Um, elevator you want as much as you can get. Rudder you want as much as you can get for high rates. You know, you can set up a low rate. The low rate you really got to tune um, a little more. I can't tell you like, you know, you want this much elevator or you want this much uh, aileron you gotta kind of tune up what you're gonna do you know I always start at half my high rate and work down from there or up from there um, and then the mid rate if you are gonna use a mid rate set that up for whatever specific maneuver you want to do so if that's more like let's say you want to do some mid-level precision but you want to have a little extra than your low rate you know a lot of people set up their mid rate as the same as their low rate except with more rudder and maybe a little bit more elevator um, kinda up to you and as far as expo that goes kinda with what radio you use so let me get out an example real quick sorry I should have been more prepared so recently I've been playing around with the new radio and it's kinda taught me a little bit more about expo and how it varies from different manufacturer to different manufacturer different curves all that stuff so I just got this the free sky uh, x7 it's like 115 bucks and the reason I got it is I just want to have something to play with that wasn't my jetty and uh, I think it's pretty cool now in this radio let me look at the model I have set up on it I can't remember the last expo value I had I know switch warning Um, let's see here. So Expos, I had 45, 50, 45, 50, rudder 35. So kind of around the 45 to 50 degree, or 45 to 50 Expo is where I was with this radio. Now, and even as low as 35 degree, or 35. Now if I go to my Jetty radio, which is this bad boy. Let me see here. If I go to my jetty radio, different airplane, but you know, pretty much same thing. I'm at 65%. Oh, sh shut up. Uh, 65 is my expo setting. So, you know, it's it kind of depends on your radio and what you're looking for. I've always started at around 50% expo and worked my way down or up. 
and there's no good way to tell you when you found that right spot you know what I normally will do is I'll, I'll set I'll start at 50 and then I will only go up in increments of 5 so if I go to 50 then I might go up to 55 or I might go down to 45 uh, don't do too many big adjustments but that's what I do when I set up dual race and expo um, I'd like to do like a a real video on the topic like have an airplane and go through the go through the setup but that's not uh in the cards right now enjoying your live stream thanks and hey whimsy what's up gap to granny whatever a uh, gap to if granny that's but yeah that's that's what i do for expos and stuff you know in the past i've always just kind of set it at whatever and not really uh, played with it but it definitely helps you know I but don't do any big movements above like five there's no point to adjust your expo by 20 points gap is easier all right works for me gap what's up gap and tonight I'm gonna be going over rifle rollers starting and then uh, Rolling Harriers and kind of like rolling loops and stuff like that. Uh, not super in-depth on one, but just like a more general overview of all of them. Mind of the gap. <laughs> What's up, Tommy? I need to go. I need to come fly up there soon. Though the weather's getting cold now, which kind of stinks. Waiting for a nice day to fly. Yep, it got cold here. It's like 44 degrees here now, so it's not it's not perfect. But I've always been like a always fly no matter what kind of guy. Even if it's like 20 degrees. We'll see if that trend continues. That was ugly. My real goal is to find like an indoor place to fly over the winter, but I don't know if I'll be able to around here. I just don't think there's many people who would like, I'd be the only person there and no church or anything is just going to let one person fly. But there's a group of us, but where I'm currently at, there's not like a big community or anything. It's just kind of, there's a club, but that's about it. No, indoor flying is really fun. Ugh. <sighs> All right, it's about getting close to time. Yeah. A little bit longer. We'll start. This has been really requested a lot, so. I did indoor flying for a while at an elementary, junior high school. Gyms with me are a bit small for my twisted hobbies, super light aircraft. Yeah, the last, I can't, I don't even remember. The last airplane I flew indoors was the 3D hobby shop Depron Velox which most people probably don't even know was a thing, but that plane was awesome and I flew it till it literally just fell apart. That that was a cool plane though. My hope is to design something of my own for indoor flying. That's my hope, but I have a lot of projects that I'm always changing what my projects are, so who knows. I mean, designing a 3D foamy isn't exactly rocket science. You just kind of take a three view, trace it, and then cut it, but you know, I'm sure there's some aerodynamic stuff you can do to make it fly better. Also, if any of you are on RC groups or any of the Facebook, uh, can you show the snap turn in slow-mo? Yeah, sure. 
if any of you are like on RC groups or like any of the big Facebook groups, um, hopefully soon there's going to be a post about a competition that I'm starting back up with some help from some other guys who are in those groups. So I think it's going to be awesome. So if you're trying to push yourself a little bit, I would highly recommend uh, going for it. It is, it is, it's a good thing to do for anyone at any skill level. Alright, I'll do a couple snap turns and then I will uh, go into rifle rollers. So snap turn. I'm assuming you mean like this, like one of those, or one of these, and then there's one of these, if I don't crash, oh, I crashed, I'll need another one. Then you can go this way. I'll gain a little altitude so I don't crash this time. These require an airplane that likes big rudder inputs. Oh, I messed up there. Too deep on the elevator. And you can go like either direction. So you can go like this or the other way. So. From that same area, you can go like this. Ah, nope. These have a lot to do with your air airframe. Like some airplanes just aren't gonna handle that big rudder kick that well. I can go over more of those for sure. Probably could be a whole video in itself. Uh, 3D foamies are the best to practice those with. 3D foamies love those things. The lighter your wing loading, the better. Also, where your CG. Uh, is no problem all right so I'm going to start going over rifle rollers now so one thing I've seen people ask is like so when these top pilots are doing rifle rollers how often are they giving inputs you know what what's the deal are they correcting every third roll are they correcting every roll are they correcting you know how do you make those tiny inputs? Now, to me, I don't see how anyone could do them as well as people are doing them now without giving inputs at every point. So, I'll give an example. So, you could theoretically give no inputs. So you would just literally just roll. You could also do like rolling and just giving elevator inputs, which you can keep on track but it's definitely not going to be that pretty. And you could even do it with rudder as well. You could, well, <laughs> I can't get the timing right with rudder, but you could give rudder inputs only as well. And you could do a rifle roller. But I know for a fact that all the pros, okay, I know for a fact that 99% of the pros out there are probably doing it this way, where you're giving an input the whole time. So you're giving small, small inputs with your rudder and your elevator oops to keep the airplane in the air and you can do this with turning so you can go out you can go up you can turn back around you know you can turn any way you want it's just all about that stirring motion and keeping track of everything that's kind of the deal with rifle rollers there's really nothing you know special about it it's about getting that kind of timing and stir motion down um, so that's how I'd recommend you do it. You know, you could, you know, the, if you're just waiting every second turn or every half turn to give an input, I don't think you're going to be fast enough and I don't think the roll's going to be smooth enough. So definitely you want to get that every roll, you're going to want to give an input. Now, the way to learn these is honestly, you could probably learn these easier than learning rolling harriers. Because rolling hairs, you're post stall. You've got a lot more to worry about. These, you just, you're just kind of steering. You're not flying as much. You're, it's just very small inputs. Sorry about that. But uh, one thing you could do to learn 
which I didn't learn like this. I had already learned rolling harriers. So if you already know rolling harriers, this is not going to be as hard. But if you're starting without rolling harriers, you could start with just slow rolls. And slow rolls are the same thing. You're giving both inputs. It's just slow, obviously. And then you could work your way up into a faster roll. So now you're kind of, you know, ex you're, you're not doing a rifle roll, but you're definitely not doing a slow roll. And honestly, that's probably a really good place to start if you don't know either. Because if you're just doing a fast roll, you can still give inputs and, you know, learn to steal the, steer the airplane. So you can steer the airplane up without doing a rifle roller. You know, you can steer the airplane down without giving a rifle roller. I know I'm flying far out, but these are kind of far out maneuvers. Um... I mean, you can really steer without it being like a true full balls to the wall rifle roller. You know, that's one way I would, you know, you might want to look at it. Now, I think the best way is probably, you know, learn to do them in a straight line first. Um, and then work on getting the timing to go around in a circle or to do rifle rolling loops. This will all go in, you know, with, in the same aspect of if you're rolling or learning rolling harriers it's all the same thing so now the hard part is when you know you start pushing the airplane over so when you when you get to the point where you can do rifle rollers up and down the runway all day you know but you can't control your height as much then you know then it's time to branch out so you can you can do rifle rollers at the same altitude right down the runway okay well now you need to learn to control your left and right turns and gaining altitude and losing altitude. Um, honestly, it's if once you start turning, it's all going to kind of hit and you'll be able to do it all. You know, one good way to learn is gain some altitude and not really try and go in a straight line, but just start rolling and just push the air, just push the nose down. You know, don't really focus on the whole thing. Just worry about that one push down. And there you go. And I will say, talking and doing these are hard. <laughs> Takes a lot of concentration. Now, uh, y you'll see videos of, like Jace Lucia and their rifle rollers are, you know, like 80 rolls per second or whatever. Um, obviously, you're going to want to not do that. <laughs> He's probably the best I've ever seen at him. So, tone the roll rate down a little bit. Not, not too much, but definitely a little bit. But that's kind of how rifle rollers go. So moving into rolling harriers and other things, I think what I'm going to do is uh, wait on rolling harriers and go more for rolling loops today. Since I think rolling harriers are pretty well documented on how to do them. Um, and there's not quite as much out there in rolling harrier like loops and how to practice those. So that's kind of what I'm going to go over. Um, first of all, if you haven't watched my video on rolling loops, watch it because it's... Um, I don't want to brag or anything, but I put a lot of time, and I, I think it's better than anything out there by far. It goes over right, left, which direction, simulator view, everything. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. So this is kind of like an addition to that. Um, I know the hardest part for people to learn. So when people are learning rolling loops, it's you'll get all the way around. So if you're going up, you're going to get to the top, and you're going to make it up here. And you're like, okay, I got this. So then you're going to be rolling. You're going to get all the way to the top. And then once you get right about here, things are going to get hairy. That last kind of fourth is the trickiest part to learn. So I want to turn the simulation down and kind of go over that in slow motion. This is going to take a while. I'll just do one loop, but it should show up pretty well. That last quarter is... It can be pretty rough, I'm not going to lie. And it's definitely the hardest part to learn. So we're doing a rolling loop. You're giving your inputs. Rudder, elevator, rudder, elevator. You get to the top. And this is one where you kind of have to make a decision. How hard am I going to commit? So, and when you're doing this last quarter, you you got to get on the sticks a lot harder than you think you would. It's not like you're just barely giving those inputs. You really have to drive and give a big elevator and rudder input. Same thing when you're first starting out. Um, I think some people kind of underestimate how much it takes to really move the airplane. 
So that's one piece of advice I definitely would have is when you're practicing this last kind of half and last quarter, you know, be prepared to give the stick some good, some good movement. Now, another thing is, um, you know, obviously at this point you're going to start by uh, learning how to adjust your altitude. So you'll be doing rolling harriers and, you, and you'll want to be able to go up and down and all that stuff. One way I always found that helped me learn is I would, well, let me restart real quick. One way I learned is I would fly around, get at a pretty good altitude, you know, definitely don't be practicing uh, too low. And what you want to do is start with like a controlled rolling harrier. I want to go back into full speed actually for this one. I wish there's like a toggle button for this. There might be. I don't know. But what I would normally do is when I was practicing was so let me get into a rolling harrier. So you're doing rolling harrier. At this time you can control speed. And I'm actually going to come from the other way. So rolling harrier. And you're going to want to be higher in real life. And just start with the push. And get that last half. And sit there and just practice the last half over and over again. Um, the first half is easy. The last half is hard. And I guess one big man is like be ready to get on the inputs. Like it's not just like a couple small inputs are going to do it. You really have to push the nose over and you really have to work the rudder as well. Personally, when I'm doing them, I kind of use the elevator to kind of watch what I'm doing, like get, giving my pushing moments. I use the elevator, which isn't the best um, tactic, but it's the way it kind of helped me. So I'm always kind of watching for that elevator input. Um, you know, as far as just like basic rolling hairs themselves, one thing that I've been kind of preaching here lately, and I think, I truly think is the best way to learn it. Um, so... Your four parts of your rolling harrier is pretty simple, and I've gone over this before, but you've got your normal upright harrier. you got to be able to do this, because you're going to be flying through this maneuver the whole time. You're going to have your inverted harrier. I mean, you've got to be able to do these. You've got to be able to do high alpha knife edge, and be pretty comfy with it, you know. Both directions, belly in, whatever. You know, this is. these are all parts of a rolling harrier. And once you get those four down, once you get super comfy with those, you'll find yourself being able to go do rolling harriers much faster. Because you can sit there and harrier, and you're like, you know what? Here we go. Now I'm high off the knife edge. You know what? Here we go. Now I'm inverted harrier. Now I'm high off the knife edge again, and now I'm back. You've just done a rolling harrier, just kind of slow. And then you can start blending that in. That's how I've been uh, kind of sh telling people my opinion how you think you should learn. I know on the uh, 3D How To Facebook page, someone asked about it today, and some people are saying, well, you can learn with just rudder, and you can. You could definitely do a rolling harrier with just rudder. Um, it's ugly. It's harder to do everything, but you can do it. And then you can also do it with just elevators, so... But you can see, like, it's, it's, it's really not the same. And honestly, what's going to happen is you're going to learn elevator, and then you're going to try and throw some rudder in there, and it's just going to mess you up. I, I would definitely strongly urge to not learn like that, you know. Not saying it's easier to learn, but it, it's definitely harder to learn both at the same time. But it's, it's just overall a better practice, in my opinion. Um... That's that's kind of how rolling harriers go. It's one of those things that's it's it's very repetitive. There's a rhythm to it, you know. And part of that's just finding all of that. But inverted harrier, normal harrier, high off the knife edge, know those very well. Now, when you start steering, 
you know, that's... So when you're... Let me go over steering a little bit. My cord's in the way, Jesus. Okay, so steering. Let me turn around here. So steering, if I'm rolling to the right, and I want to do a turn to my right, I'm going to kind of delay my inputs a little bit. Now, if I want to turn to the left, I've got to give my input early. So now all my inputs are a little bit early, causing the nose to push one way. Now, personally, I've always found uh, that if you're rolling one direction, so let's say you are pr primarily rolling to the right, that means you're primarily, it's going to be easier to turn to the to the right as well. So if I'm rolling to the right, I've always found it a little bit easier to roll to the right or do a right circle turn rather than left. The main reason being is your timing doesn't have to be quite as perfect because if you are if you mess up and you're a little early, now you're going straight. If you are a little late, now you're turning the direction you want to. When you're turning like if you're rolling right and turning left the other way, if you're late, you're going forward. If you're early, now you're going into the ground. And if you're on time, you're turning left. So keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to rolling like right versus left, that's just pure repetition and it sucks because you're going to get really good at rolling right and then you're going to have to learn rolling left and it's no fun. But I don't think learning it at the same time is um, doable. I mean, you could. I think it's better to focus one way, though. Um... Also, on my uh, YouTube channel, I have a couple other smaller videos about rollers and like steering and all that stuff, which I would definitely, if you haven't seen those already, check those out as well. Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything else on the topic. I mean, you could literally talk about this for days at a time, but I kind of wanted to clear up some misconceptions about rifle rollers where you are giving an input every time you're going around. And then as far as learning rolling carriers, you are you need to know those basic four points before you get there. Um, rolling loops, it's kind of the same ordeal. The last half, the last quarter is the hardest part. And getting those down really takes one, putting yourself in that situation over and over again. Um, and part of it too is it's harder to see the airplane. I don't know why, but nine times out of ten if you ask someone why do you think the last fourth is harder it's because the airplane's at a weird angle to you um, it's it's definitely tricky but you know when you put all this together it'll look really awesome because when you put all of it together so let's say you can rifle roller and now you can do loops and rolls and all that stuff so you can do rifle rolling loops all that fun stuff you can also change up your timing so you can roll to the right and then you want to go the other direction and do like a figure eight kind of thing, which I think this is a good way to practice as well. Um, doing like a rolling harrier figure eight because um, you get both ups and downs twice. And the last thing is like I did talk about in my uh, video on depth of flying is when you're learning like rolling loops, make sure you're staying in that same depth. You don't want to push out. You don't want to fly towards yourself. You want to stay and make that perfect figure eight. Now, I'll show you one kind of thing that I'm really bad about, which I'm trying to improve on. So, I'll be flying and I'll be doing a rolling harrier. I'll say, you know what? It's time for a rolling loop. I'll go up. I'll get to the top and then I'll just push right over. And that's it. That's not a rolling loop. A rolling loop looks like this. Well, I'm going to attempt to do a perfect rolling loop. Rolling loop. You're coming all the way up. All the way down. Flying out at the same level. You know, when you're practicing these things, keep those things in mind because I've created a bad habit for myself of I get to the top of the loop and I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to push over real quick. Um, and that's not a rolling loop. Um, keep that in mind. It's like one of those mental things like if you do it enough times it's just been a, you're gonna do it every time 
but I think they look cool in some situations. But, you know, if you're going for a real nice and pretty rolling loop, you got to be ready to actually do a full rotation of the circle. You can see at the end there, you, you can give pretty big tail inputs and uh, be okay. I mean, that's what you're going to have to do because you are losing airspeed and you're still trying to lose the right amount of altitude. So it's definitely a tricky topic, that's for sure. But I hope that cleared some things up about rifle rollers and such. Um, like I said, work your way into them. Start with just rolling up and down the runway, slow rolls, and slowly speed those slow rolls up. Um, you know, you can try turning at that point, but I wouldn't recommend it. So, I think that's all I got about rolling harriers for right now. I'll probably think of something and hit it again. But, uh, so I'm going to look at some YouTube questions real quick. So, if you guys have anything in the chat, let me know. Um, hopefully that helps someone out. It's, it's hard to really talk a lot about rolling hairs because it, it gets to that point where you kind of say the same thing over and over again. <laughs> it, it's all about practice. So let me go to the YouTube comments real quick. So I'll take one second. Also, if you guys, uh, do a lot of YouTubing and watch a lot of YouTube channels. A really cool YouTube channel you should check out is Peter Shreepal. He just built his own electric ultralight, like by himself, like out of foam. And it's really cool. Go check it out. He's got like a bajillion subscribers. You're probably already subscribed, but uh, really cool. Let me see here. Okay, here it is. Here's the last video uploaded, so it should have some questions on there. Um, let me see. Here we go. This is where I need to be. Okay. We should discuss the Tucson shootout and analyze some of the freestyles. I would love to do that. Um, they, uh, the, I watched... I really love the shootout and I love competition and I hate how there's not much of it going on. Um, I think that uh, I think it's kind of a shame to be honest. Sven Bardos, I'm pretty sure that's is that Noob Noob 3D. Pretty sure that's Noob 3D. I'm like 50% sure. If it's not, I'm sorry. Yes, do you like fly foamies? Which foamies? I don't have any right now. The last foamy I had was called a Slicko. I didn't really like it that much, to be honest. Um, I'd love to get a Twisted Hobbies soon, but I don't really have space. Four point rolling here, yeah, I can definitely hit that for sure. Um, another one is maybe more about switching rates. Do you use low rates for big, slow rolling uh, circles? If yes, how do you do the snap in the circle like Jace does sometimes? Switch to high rates and switch to low rates? Okay, that's actually a really good question. I'll go over that right now. Uh, airport dog, what's up, man? Uh, left, us, left and right sl side slips and inverted side slips. Is either slip orientation easier based upon motor torque, etc.? And JJ Hendricks, suh, dude, suh, dude. Four point rolling airs. All right, I can definitely go over that stuff. Um, so that one YouTube question is really good, and it's about dual rates, which we kind of went over earlier. So. If you're doing like a big precision one roll rolling circle, which I'll attempt one. I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect, but I'll, I'll attempt one. So if you're doing something like this, I'm actually going to do it from the other direction because I'm more comfy doing it that way, which is bad. I should be a man, but I'm not. A... So one rolling circle going out here. Kind of threw that rudder in. I don't know where the ground is at this point. Ah, that was pretty ugly. But you get the point. It's a giant precision roll. And in some uh, competitions and stuff, you have to do a snap while you're doing this. So once you get to the back 
um, like the far end away from you, you have to do like a snap and a quarter, a snap to knife edge. Um, typically, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it all in high rates because if I'm sitting there and I'm doing a rolling circle and I'm sitting there, you know, trying to be perfect with my elevator and rudder inputs, the last thing I want to do is take my fingers off the switch or take my fingers off the sticks and hit a switch, make a snap, and then have to hit another switch to give myself the race. So hitting a switch and doing a maneuver like that, I'm not a fan of. I would much rather do the whole thing in high rates rather than switch rates mid-maneuver. Um, it's just more to think about, more that could go wrong. You know, you could be doing it perfect, but if your fingers, you know, even if you're a thumb flyer and hitting switches with your other fingers, um, I, I wouldn't recommend it. I think it's just best to do it at a high rate or a rate that will do both well. So you still have enough for a snap and you still um, have a toned down rate for that precision maneuver. Okay, let's go over side slips. Honestly, I'm not that great at side slips. Um, I don't, as far as, like when you say side slips, are you talking about this? Where you come in like for a landing? Or, um, so when you come in like, kind of like this, and bleed off speed, and then come in and land? Or is it more like this? I don't really know exactly what's which version you're talking about four point rolling hairs three quarter positive from inverted oh my lord can you do three rolls with breaks between in between a snap near the ground and exit the way you came in on a 45 degree knife edge up line so a snap near the ground and exit the way you came in on a 45 degree knife up line okay I gotta try that. That sounds pretty cool. Exit the same way you came. So you wanna you wanna come in, do a snap, and exit on a 45 degree down line the same way you came in. Kind of like that, maybe, maybe. Soy or teriyaki. Teriyaki. We're talking about dinner. Teriyaki tonight. Something like that. I think that's an exit, kind of. Yeah, I know there's probably a little exit there. Ooh, a weeble wobble on an upline. That's a good one. What do you think, Gap? Is that what you're looking for? Let me try again. So you want to snap. Okay. Now, I know there's one of these which was a thing for a while where you do a snap and exit on a 45 degree upline like that. Which that's like, that has to do with like the little stupid rainbow maneuver that's everyone does. It goes like this, left to right, a single right roll, stop, right roll, Stop, right roll, stop, outside snap near the ground, and a 45 degree knife edge, right to left. Is there a video of that? I, if someone has done that in a video, send it to me and I'll definitely take a look. So three rolls, outside snap near the ground, exit 45 degree knife edge right to left. Three rolls. Here, let me slow us down real quick. That's a, I don't know, it sounds cool. I wish I got on video, I did it last year. I want to give this one more shot in slow-mo. Okay, so one roll, two roll, three rows. Almost, almost. If I had stopped that snap, that might have got it. 
hesitation roll. Uh, I don't even know what that one is. Like, gonna need some video references for that one. Now, if that was close, you could definitely do that. All you would have to do is get that last snap to end correctly, which probably would have taken less power. Hesitation roll. Is that like a... I've always thought of that as more like a, a four-point roll. Let's see. I'm not even going to mess with a three-quarter positive from inverted. Like, all that kind of stuff. Like, you just got to do a snap. And then you got to learn how to stop where you want it. There's no, like, tricks. That stuff will drive you crazy. <laughs> I try not to do that kind of stuff. Or sit there and just be like, I want to be able to do this, blah, blah, blah. Four-point rolling harriers. Four-point rolling harriers, I mean... Whoops. So if you're doing rolling harriers, the main thing with these is while they're still a rolling harrier, you also have to fly them like the individual maneuvers. So you, if you're doing a four point rolling harrier and you're sitting there just, you know, Every time you stop at knife edge, you have to remember that you also have to correct with your elevator at the same time. And every time you get and you stop in Harrier, you need to give a small input with your rudder. So that's kind of the trick with those to get them really smooth is not just to sit there and pause and not do anything. Is Every time you pause, make that tiny correction you need. Everyone in the peanut gallery went nice recovery. That's what the peanut gallery is for, man. They're supposed to cheer you on slash ag you into the ground. That's that's what they're there for, man. Uh, weeble wobble uplines. Same thing as a normal weeble wobble. So if you're doing a weeble wobble upline, simply just do rolling hair inputs twice as fast. Same thing for downline. Same thing for upline. Same thing for downline. Well, don't do them that low. That'd be really stupid, but. Yeah, so that's, hopefully those might help someone out in there. Yeah, but if you guys have any, uh, any videos, like, if I don't know it, like, just shoot me a video either on here or on my RC group thread, and I'll take a look and definitely get, uh, take a look at it, which reminds me I want to go look at, uh, that thread real quick, because I know there was one thing I wanted to touch on as well. Real quick. Okay, here we go. Okay, it was a lot of people have been posting about Daniel Holman, and that he is like the greatest of all time. Like he was doing a bunch of this crazy stuff before it was cool. Just, just letting y'all know, he was he like all of the, like the crazy snap stuff that Jace does came from Daniel. Like you can you can go back and see videos that Daniel did where he was doing it. Uh, maybe not quite as extreme, but he was definitely, you know. Being, doing some cool stuff. And there's one thing. Let's see. Let me go back to the next page. I think it was he was doing like a knife edge from... He went from knife edge to knife edge spin. Oh, he violently transitions from level flight to knife edge spin. 
which at first I thought it was going to be like a crankshaft, but I don't think it was. Hello, James. If not too late, would you give some tips on turns during rollers? Yes. I went over that earlier, but I'll just go over it again since you weren't here. Um, oh, at 235, Daniel did a snap, which I thought Jason invented, but that was Daniel doing exactly the same in 2012. Yeah. Like I'm saying, Daniel was doing stuff that people are doing now quite a long time ago. I mean, 2012 when he was like, I guess at his peak, I don't remember the year he won XFC, but he was doing it. Like the, you know, the inverted deep snap to like knife it to upline. Yeah, Daniel was doing that. Hey, Wamsy, I just remembered I have video, some indoor I did last year. I'll try and send it to you through a message on through to YouTube. Cool. Yeah, for sure. I'd love to do a stream watching the Tucson Aerobatic Shootout videos. If you guys would be interested in that, please let me know. I'd love to just, it'd be like probably hour and a half, two hour stream of watching like the top nine or ten flights and just pausing it at really cool parts. But like, whoa, how'd they do that? Okay, let me go back over rolling rolling Harrier turns real quick. Uh, so, for for when you're doing like rolling Harrier turns, the main thing is knowing kind of what you're doing. And I mean, that sounds stupid. That's not a good way to say it. But so let's say we'll for example, let's do right rolling Harriers here. When you're doing, I'll slow it down as well. And I'm only gonna slow it down to about 50% speed for this. So when you're doing rolling harriers, so rolling harriers, so if you're rolling to the right and you're going to turn into to the right, this is this means you're delaying your inputs. This means you're giving your rudder a little late so it's pushing the nose and you're giving your elevator a little late whoops you're giving your elevator a little late and both of those late inputs are causing the nose to go in that direction so if you're rolling to the right and want to turn to the left now you've got to give that input a little early now it's not perfect because I'm in slow motion and my timing is all messed up but that's kind of the main thing is um, knowing what you're really looking for so when you're rolling right turning right you're giving late inputs if you're rolling right turning left you're giving early inputs now you're gonna find it easier to at least in my opinion and I think most people will be the same way it, to learn right rolls and turning right the reason being is if you are giving inputs if you're shooting to give an input input late that means if you are late on that input you're gonna keep turning right if you give it right on time you're gonna turn to the right and it's still late and if you give it a little early, now you're just going straight. Now, if you're rolling to the right and turning to the left, now if you give it input too early, you're going into the ground. If you give it input on time, you're rolling to the left. And if you give it input late, you're going straight. It kind of works the same, but um, one direction was always a little bit easier for me to get. And a good example is, so when it comes to rolling, I'm much better at rolling to the right than rolling to the left. So if I go back to full speed and then just kind of show like what I'm doing. So if I'm practicing rolling to the right, whoops. So I'm practicing rolling to the right, you know, neither direction really matters to me. I can turn on a dime pretty well. So that's kind of a zigzag out of the way for me. So now if I'm rolling to the left, let me come back. Which rolling straight at, you know, in a straight line is better for me. But when I start rolling to the left and turning to the left and giving that late input, I have, I'm okay. But when I have to give the input early, I'm going to fly into the ground like 30% of the time. So keep that in mind when you're practicing those, is what timing changes you're really looking to make. Um, you know, turning is, I wouldn't say the hardest part but um, definitely be on the lookout for that. Sorry about that, Whamsy. I didn't realize YouTube's now streaming usernames when you switch accounts. 
but uh, hopefully that helped. I, I went over it a little more earlier, so when I'm done streaming, uh, you can feel free to check out uh, what I said. Um, and also, I do have a couple other videos on rolling. Like, I'm really proud of my rolling loop video. That took a lot of time to do. Um, I think, honestly, that's like the upper tier of RC tutorial videos. But that, that video took a long time to make. How about Funnel Hover? Yeah, I have a video on Funnel Hovers, but I'll go over some real quick. Now, the main thing about Funnel Hovers is you can go both directions. It's definitely possible. How do you transition for left to right rollers or vice versa? That's a good question. So, there's kind of ways to cheat. So, I guarantee if you watch, like, my flights or some top pilot's flights, they're going to transition at typically, you know, the same time. When I transition, I normally go there. And you'll see it again. So, when I come back around, I kind of have that happy point where I like to do my transition. Um, that's kind of how I started. Is I would kind of look for, I look for a certain spot and transition there every time, which is kind of bad. It's a habit forming thing, but uh, you know it does kind of give you a a frame of reference for the when you switch. Um, so you know if I were gonna learn, let's say you're learning and you're rolling to the right, maybe look for the canopy and you know that's where you want to switch to the left. Or, if you're rolling to the right, wait until you see the belly, and then that's when you roll to the left. And eventually, you're just kind of be able to do it naturally. But that's one thing I would always do, is I kind of pick what I'm looking for. And for me, it kind of got to the point where I'd see that and switch, and then it got to the point where I could just kind of switch whenever. Um, that's kind of how I started with that spark. Funnel hover. It's probably like one of the simplest maneuvers out there actually. It got really crazy for a while. But I typically start from inverted. Think of it as an inverted hair turn that's really fast, so. Whoa, what was that? So there you go, that's all it is. You kinda have to work the L the aileron a little bit. Because your wing will want to kind of go in on itself and go towards the middle of the loop, but that's it. That's all you got to do. You can literally sit there and do it with your eyes closed, kind of. I cheat even more. I switch and I'm upright. Hey, that's fine, you know. I don't think it really matters, and maybe if you're doing a routine where you have to switch at a certain point, but uh, I think it's a good way to start. It's definitely a good way to start. And with funnel hovers... Um, you can go one direction and you can go the other direction a little bit it doesn't work as well due to the the torque of the engine not helping you out as much but you can do it it's just a little bit harder to get into and it doesn't look quite as good you can kind of see on that one you're rotating more around the CG but you can go it'll you can spin both directions it's just one that's much easier but on some airplanes, like the 104 Slick, you can just put the sticks in the corner, and you're good. That's all you have to do. The, the real skill there is just how low are you going to do it, and how stupid are you. <laughs> I think the lowest one I've ever did was with a 3D Hobby Shop Viper Vipe, like the biplane they had. That thing would just, it was amazing, because you had so much aileron. It was incredible. Sponsored by Dr. Pepper, as usual. Let me see if I missed any uh, questions real quick. He violently transitions from level flight to night fetch spin. Let me take a look at this real quick. I don't know if you can hear the video playing, so... Okay, uh, Ripper911. So I don't think he's level in that video. I think he actually does uh, knife edge 
He's he goes from in knife edge to knife edge spin. Um he I'll kinda I'll try and slow it down. I don't know why my computer just got slow. Hopefully my computer regains its frame rate. Let me try this real quick. Sorry about this, guys. I don't know what's going on. There we go. So if you're going to do, like, I know in that video, Daniel Holman's flying, like, in a knife edge like this, and then he immediately goes into a knife edge spin. So let me gain a little altitude. And I'm pretty sure he goes something like this. Uh, not the best knife edge spin, but let me try again. I think the main thing with this is it looks like he, he did like a big push maneuver and he was going left to right or something like that. Knife edge. Uh, I know he had a big negative push, so part of it is just getting the airplane into like its comfy state as well. Because you'll find like knife edge spin kind of has those weird areas where it enters really easy and enters not so easy. So it looks like he kind of timed his airspeed and his left to right to kind of do that. And it looks like he pushed in on the airplane, which kind of goes into a knife edge spin rather than uh, the other way. Airport dog. Do you ever intentionally drag the tail or tips on the runway? Any pointers? Uh, don't do it because you'll crash. <laughs> That's my pointer. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's possible. The main thing is not like, uh, I don't know. I don't think there's really any pointers other than, you know, you just got to have kind of guts to do it. It's definitely more wise to drag the elevator and the rudder than trying to go for a wingtip. I've like 99% of the time wingtip's a bad idea. Um, I've done it in rollers, but you just have to kind of hit it just right. You know, it's, it's more luck based than anything. You're going to crash probably. Yeah, that's that's my main pointer though. Don't try it. Like fly as close as you can, but don't actually like drag the rudder or anything cuz that's when uh that's when you're going to crash. <laughs> and if you do want to practice that, a foamy. But I have done it intentionally. Uh a King 50 my third year flying in the King 50, I did it intentionally. Um I don't like that video, but I did do it intentionally. JJ Hendrick box turns. I don't I don't know I don't know what a box turn is. is that like a I don't know specifically what that is. Is that like when Jace does this? Oops, sorry. Is this like when Jace goes around and he'll fly knife edge and push? And then it'll push again, and then it'll push again. Is that what he? Is that what that is? Is that the official turn? Yeah, pretty much the square loop horizontally. I've been looking into those like big vortexes that Jace has been doing. Um, you know those big pushing maneuvers. Um, it takes a good airplane, that's for sure, but they're not as hard as you would think. Like, part of the issue with doing stuff like that is you feel the need to punch the throttle, which you're going to need speed, but that also affects your rudder. So let me show you what I mean. So if you're going to do something like that, you're going to be a knife edge. And what Jace will do is he'll push the airplane like that and then I'll push it to the airplane like that now sometimes you're gonna do that and if you have enough speed then uh, you'll kinda snap the airplane um, and then I'll do one of these where he'll be doing knife edge and he'll push all the way around and do something like that 
And the main thing with those is you have to understand that at some point you're going to have to give rudder down into the ground. And it's really freaky. And you want to have a good airplane. The, the slick 560 I have does it really good. And you got to have a lot of power. Yeah, JJ, if you have a video of what a box turn is, I'll definitely take a look. But I don't know. Someone needs to make an encyclopedia for all this new cool stuff. Because it's getting out of hand. Back in the good old days, you just did rolling hairs and that was it. Also, I can't really see my stream too well, so if anything's going wrong, let me know. So, let me look back at comments one more time. Uh... Yep, I think that's all the main comments, so. Uh, I don't think I have too much more to cover, so I'll probably just be flying around for the next 10 minutes or so, and then answer questions, and then I'll be done. I still gotta eat dinner and go to bed. I'll make one and send it via Facebook Messenger. Sure. Yeah, feel free to send me stuff. That's um, as far as like my YouTube stuff. I'm hoping to have some more videos out next week. I'm trying to, I'm gonna try and record some flights this weekend because I've been flying that RC Gadget Slick 560 a lot more, and I I've gotten a lot better with it. Like, it's just a lot more comfortable. Um. In my past streams, I mentioned the glider I'm 3D printing. My 3D printer was messing up for like a couple days, so I had a bunch of failed prints, but now it works magically again, so hopefully that'll get going. And yeah, I want to get this Park Flyer freestyle competition going, so if any out there want to compete, start practicing up a routine, and uh, I expect to see some awesome stuff. We have some judges already set up. So I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, I won't be competing in it. I'm going to be a judge. Because I just think there's a severe lack of any kind of fun competition stuff. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can find a day I want to do the Tucson Aerobatic Shootout stuff. If I could, if people will watch, I'll definitely do it. I like to have a go at the park fire comp as it's about fun, but I can't post on RC crap. So. Yeah, once the competition gets going, someone can post it up for you, no prob. But it's not like fully in gear yet, so right now it's just I'm trying to get everything going. Foamy freestyle, yeah, foamy is fine. You know, anything under a wingspan of 64 inches is is good to go. Um, you can enter. I, I will have a I'm gonna do a short tutorial on how to edit music like just the very basics um, it's it's very simple the way I've always done it's very simple but yeah any airplane under the wingspan of 64 inches can enter this competition there's gonna be some cool prizes which hopefully we'll be announcing soon we've got some cool judges um, the main thing is just getting people out there and trying to learn some stuff and pushing themselves. Cause once you start flying to music and doing that kind of stuff, it's really fun. Like it's so much fun. Let me go back to full speed. Okay. Sent. Right, let me see what you sent me. Let's see what we got here. Uh, oh, JJ. Okay. I thought that was you. I didn't wanna I didn't wanna like 
call someone out who I wasn't sure who it was. Competition judged by submitted video. Yes, so you uh, you pretty much record your video of your freestyle. You can either record yourself with the music in the background or add the music in post-production and uh, then submit it and judges will look at it and we'll pick a top winner. And uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. The contest is going to run as of right now at least to the end of November. Might open it up a little bit longer. But for right now, uh, it's going to run to the end of November. All right, let's see what JJ sent me real quick. If I can blow. Oh, there we go. Oh, got the iPhone camera out. Let's see. I'm watching this video right now. Let's see here. Oh, okay. Let me see. Let me watch. Box turns. So like snap turns? Snap turns, JJ? I see the one where you kind of do the extra spin. I'll definitely watch that if I, I – there's one I've never seen before. So, dude, yeah. So, yeah. Let me see here. Yeah, so snap turns are – we kind of went over this earlier. Like that. Yeah, those. I went over those earlier. Um, definitely. Those are just pretty much snaps like that you just interrupt. Yeah, but less ground. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost forgot. Yeah, hoping to, it would extend into the next year. I have no idea if I can get to the field to do that. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what, though. I want, I'd love to do these every two or three months. If I could get sponsors or people to enter, I, that's my ultimate goal is to have something that people can enter, you know, every couple months. So if you don't make it into the first one, there's going to be more, but definitely try and make it into the first one because the more people we have into the first one, the better we can make the next one. So I'm going to, I'm still working on that. So thank you guys if, for the support on that. I think some people are really going to like it. Um, yeah, so if you have a plane smaller 64 inch wingspan, show us how it's done. It's also a good way to get your name out there. Uh, Daniel Holman, I don't think, was sponsored. Then he posted his amazing flight and was immediately picked up by Extreme Flight. Somebody asked about avoiding copyright songs, as it will mean you can't upload without being muted. Can you check any song on YouTube? It tells you if the song is copyrighted, but actually, most songs are copyrighted, but usually now you can upload, but you can't receive any money for your hits. Yes. You know, uh, that's why we're also going to allow entries on any, any like, video sharing website that's PG, you can upload your video to. So, Vimeo, Facebook, YouTube, all those are fair game to upload. Yeah, and that's what YouTube does. If you have copyrighted content, you cannot put ads on it. I don't run ads on anything I do, so it doesn't affect me too much, but they will still tell you that you can't. And yeah, two to three months, that's hopefully what I'm shooting for. Um, Doc is setting me up with the plane when I get to Florida. Hell yeah. I haven't flown with Doc, but he's cool online. Um, that's what I'd like to do. Every two to three months, and what I'd really love to do is have like a freestyle competition, and then I would do like the next one would be like a freestyle competition, but with a known maneuver, and then the next one would be a freestyle competition that focuses more on the precision side and then a freestyle competition that focuses more on the 3D side. So, like, it's not, it's a different flavor every time. And so not everyone is just a basic freestyle entry. That's, that's the ultimate goal. I'm talking freestyle, not just a smack flight. I hate, I hate the term smack flight. Like, I just don't understand that. 
Whoever started that needs to stop. But that's the ultimate goal for that. So if you guys see that anywhere, please, please support it. It would mean a lot to me. What exactly is a smack fight? That's the that's the ultimate question. People are like, well, is it smack or freestyle? Freestyle is supposed to be choreographed, or smack 3D is supposed to be you know super low to the ground, super dangerous. But that's pretty subjective. It's very subjective to what like the you know that day. Are you flying with your new radio? No, I'm still flying with this nasty real flight crap. But I do have the Tyrannus, and I do like it. Um, I wish I had gotten the 9 for ergonomics sake, but I will say for 115 bucks, like those Tyrannuses are pretty darn cool. If I ever get back into competing, my goal would be to go and compete with a $150 radio and kick everyone's butt. King 50 was freestyle, like it was definitely more 3D oriented, but there was still freestyle going around. I love to bring back the King 50. That that's that would be awesome. I love I love that series. But nowadays, no one wants to throw competition unless there's money involved, so it kind of stinks. I really like to avoid competitions that are just people throwing their airplanes at the ground. I'd like to see creativity and stuff. I was talking to Dave about that at House Mountain. Yeah, House Mountain would be great. If you guys are ever in Tennessee, House Mountain is the place to fly. All right, I got five minutes and then I'm done, guys. So it's been cool to chat, though, that's for sure. The new King 50, but new name King Fitty. No. No, no, JJ. Yeah, it's Real Flight 6.5. I saw the Real Flight 8 has a uh, virtual reality, which is pretty cool. So, if Real Flight wants to send me that, that'd be awesome. But I can't. I don't want to buy it. I just like Real Flight does a lot for the hobby. Like I talked to them when I was trying to get my Real Flight 6.5 back up, and they're saying how we love to offer it, you know, software only. But the main reason we don't do that is because. We want people to have to go to the local hobby shops to buy it or buy it straight from us online. Which is actually pretty cool because it's got to be a hard life in the hobby shop business right now. Yeah, 7.5, but if I'm going to get anything, I'm going to get 8. I think 8 will be pretty cool. How do you change going direction, going into rolling loop at the top? Hey, uh, Jeff, so are you mean like when you go from up and pushing all the way down over? 
Is that what you mean? Because there's kind of a funny thing about that. Which, in my rolling loop video, I talk about it a little bit. So, when you're doing a rolling loop, and you go all the way around, there's no timing change and there's no direction you'll change. You should be giving the same input pattern all the way around. The only thing that's changing is pretty much the fact that you've pushed so far over you've now gone all the way around. It's not like when you get to the top there's a there's a magical like push or something you have to give. It's the same thing all the way around. Now when you at the top, you might want to give a bigger input to kind of help you get all the way around, but uh, it's the exact same as the upline and downline. So you're just doing the same constant thing all the way around. The only thing that changes is maybe how big the inputs are. I got the loop, I just can't change the direction going the other way. Got the loop, just can't change the direction going the other way. So if you like roll from left to right or right to left. I can't change it. Oh, so if you're like, okay. Are you talking about when uh, you're doing a rolling loop and then go like this? and go change directions that way. That was not a rolling loop, but still same thing. Kind of. Yes, okay, cool. I'll hit this last and then I'm gonna eat food because I'm hungry. I think it's ready. Um. Kind of the way I talked about earlier when you're switching from left and right rolling hairs and you kind of pick that one point where you always switch from. I kind of do the same thing with rolling loops. So I'm doing a rolling loop and I get to the top. I typically wait till I'm inverted like right here and then I use that to kind of guide my reference. So I'll get to the top. Here, let me let me turn down the speed real quick. So when I'm like doing my loop, I get to the top, I kind of wait, and now I see here, and now I start my push. And I wait till I'm inverted, because I know that's when I need to change my timing and give my down elevator there to push the nose back up. So I get to the top, I wait till I'm inverted, and now I push to push myself the other way. And then when I get back down, I wait till I'm inverted, and now I push the other way. So I, I would look for that. When you get to that very top, pick the point where you kind of want to start the input. So I always wait till I'm inverted and then push the elevator. Or you could wait till you know you're upright and you know the pull. But you kind of have that one point where you know you have to change your stirring motion or you change which way the nose is going to go. That's kind of how I do it. Like I said, still not perfect. You really would be wanting to just be able to do it in any, any form. But... Unless you're someone flying at the Tucson shootout, probably going to be alright for a while. Hopefully that helped, Jeff. And thanks for the question. Snaposaurus? <laughs> Snaposaurus is lame. Quote me. Send it to him. No problem. Alright guys, I think that's going to be it for tonight. Thanks for coming out. 
I hope to see you guys next time I stream, which should be next week, but I think I might actually go to every other week now, um, just because uh, the way the weather is, there's not much flying left, so I like to kind of have a little extra time after work to go fly. But uh, I'll be posting uh, when I am going to stream. Thanks for watching, Tommy. Hopefully I'll make it up there to fly with you here soon, one day. Y'all have a nice field up there. But, uh, yep, so that's the plan for now. Thanks for watching. Do me a favor, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and if anyone uh, would like, share the stream. That's the big thing. Um, and also, watch, uh, watch for that freestyle competition. And I'd love to see a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of people uh, enter. I expect, there's 14 people watching, I expect 14 people to enter. So, start practicing, everyone. Come to C Connecticut? Nah, I'm good. That's a little too far north. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I've actually never been that far. The, f the farthest north I've been is up to Ohio. Meet me halfway. Come to Knoxville. That's better. Come to Knoxville. Uh, where The competition is going to be all online. So you just have to film yourself flying and uh, submit the video. So it's all going to be video submission. And I'm currently flying at Summit RC Flying Field in Udawa, 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 Uda something, Tennessee. So it's all, it'll be a video submission contest. So I expect every one of you to send me a, enter a video and hopefully someone will take home the gold and you'll probably give me the prize, obviously. And I think the prize is going to be pretty sweet as of now. So yeah, I'll have the rules posted in the uh, how to 3D section. And uh, it'll be all in the How To 3D section on Facebook, and it'll also be in RC Groups. Submit when and where you can submit to any video hosting website and post on the RC Groups thread or on the Facebook group. And you can also um, you can also uh, if you need help posting or anything, just message me, and I will gladly point you in the right direction. The, all the criteria will be posted in the next week. So within a week, all the details will be out there. So I'm just trying to get everything together right now, and I'm working with some people. All right, guys. I think that's going to be it for me. Uh, thanks for watching, and it was a good stream. I hope you guys learned something. I'm out. I'm going to eat dinner. <laughs>